Hello and welcome to Devtoberfest. This is week one and we are on data and analytics uh, track today. Let me do just a quick introduction into a few things that I would like you uh, to know. So uh, first of all, the Devtoberfest is four weeks um, long event organized by uh, SAP Developer Advocates together with uh, our product teams. Uh, I am one of the Developer Advocates. My name is Vitaly, and I am the host for uh, all data and analytics sessions uh, during the Devtoberfest. One thing uh, that um, <clears throat> I would like to remind you as well is that you can participate in the Devtoberfest game it is a contest where you can collect some points and as well watching today's session or recording of the session uh, can be rewarded with this extra uh, extra points as well uh, to do that you should go to the validation page it is uh, attached to the description of the video uh, on youtube it is available as well as a comment on the session page and uh, today uh, we have um, two sessions, uh, both um, uh, on using embedded machine learning, uh, first in SAP HANA, and the second one later today uh, in Data Warehousing Cloud. And with that, I would like to pass the microphone to uh, Christopher and Christoph, the stage is yours. Thank you very much for the introduction, Vitaly. Uh, hello, everyone. So my name is Christoph Morgan. I'm part of the SAP HANA product management team. And today I'd like to kind of give you an overview on how to leverage the HANA machine learning capabilities uh, with HANA cloud building and BTP application, for example and kind of taking the perspective from the data scientists, maybe working in Python with the machine learning clients for HANA and how they can contribute uh, yeah, machine learning scenario code, if you want, with the, with the developer. Or you as a developer, you may want to also leverage the, the Python interfaces, uh, which are maybe easier to, to start with from the machine learning scenario perspective, but how can you then generate your code you'd actually then like to embed into uh, your uh, BTP or SAP on a cloud application, which supposedly needs to be rather SQL than the, the Python code. Okay, usual kind of this disclaimer, I'm giving you the, the overview here on uh, the machine learning capabilities for those who are new to the topic, uh, which machine learning function libraries do we have? Which clients do we have specifically for data scientists? And we can uh, also use SQL or SQL script to leverage the uh, machine learning functions. I give you a demo on, on both. And then we wanna specifically focus also on that handshake between the data scientist and the developer. Uh, how can we leverage the, the Python environment to generate the SQL code or even the artifacts uh, we want to maybe embed into our business application studio project. Certainly, I'm happy to kind of uh, yeah, answer all your, your, your questions. So if, you, if we look at the, the SAP HANA cloud and machine learning or multi-model capabilities, I think they are a rich uh, tool set of, let's say, extended capabilities for building nice application where you can then augment using the spatial, the graph, or in our case, the machine learning capabilities, leveraging the in-memory performance of the, let's say, native AI functions from those two libraries, the predictive analysis library or the automated predictive library. I will quickly overview. You can leverage them from the SQL interface, but certainly as I uh, laid out with this Python or R machine learning clients and build nice multi-model application. There are multiple SAP applications who bring their own C++ function library. So that's a, a nice uh, and, and uh, concept in SAP HANA and specifically in HANA Cloud. 
there are already applications which, which leverage the elastic scalability of SAP HANA Cloud uh, for those, in, in that case, integrated business planning, leverage this elastic scale, uh, scalability feature uh, for the deep demand planning runs. Um, what scenarios do we talk about if we speak uh, uh, about HANA machine learning? We refer to the classic machine learning scenarios. So classification, regression, time series forecasting as the most trending one. In classification, we want to predict a classifier or so a category value, like is somebody likely to churn or behave fraudulent. In regression, we want to predict uh, a continuous value, like a, a market price of a car or something like that, a cost figure, a sales figure whatsoever. And in time series forecasting, it's also a continuous value, but a time-related series of multiple of those values. So uh, the future 10 days of sales or demand or cost, something like that. So there's always the time relation to the numeric value and a series of those numeric values. So those are the most prominent, but there's also others uh, like outlier detection, uh, for example, predictive maintenance or clustering, grouping customers are typical ones. And if we now look at how things shall play together, certainly the data scientist is busy with building the machine learning scenario, understanding the problem, picking the best algorithm, tuning the algorithm, and then finally this persona is ready with kind of, you know, this is basically uh, how the machine learning algorithm shall be applied to the problem. Now let's yeah, generate the code and embed this into the application, passing this on to the application developer. And then this is certainly embedded into the application. And therefore, typically uh, uh, we see there is this handshake between the two personas. Certainly there's also the application developers who can kind of uh, work uh, take the data science role as well, but often in large customer organizations, we see there's a separation of, uh, let's say, these roles as well. But uh, uh, that's what we want to explore today. So the first AI function library is the, the automated predictive library, uh, which is kind of a simple and, and first approach to yeah, the typical scenarios like classification, regression, time series forecasting. There's only a limited number of functions, which we'll see in a second. And it's called automated predictive library because the engine or the procedures automate all the steps from selecting the columns, the variables or features, as we say, preparing some of the, uh, uh, the data, the variable encoding, missing value handling, handling outliers, spinning and banding of uh, values, uh, which are supposed to be categorical and from a, a lower cardinality, model testing, best model and parameter selection, all that is kind of embedded in the engine. Therefore, it's an easy start for non-expert data scientists, so also for uh, developers, administrators, or even business analysts. And yeah, it's a uh, great, um, yeah, value to have this this uh, automated predictive library and it's always uh, a good first start for a problem as basically uh, from the SQL side you would call a function called great model and train give some of the, the parameters but very limited pass in your data and you'll get your classification or regression or whatever scenario and then you can simply apply the model again from the SQL side but there's also other means which you can use. So that's very easy and straightforward and always uh, recommend to take a look at the automated predictive library, specifically if you are not an expert data scientist. If you have more, let's say, in-depth knowledge about that field of machine learning, you may wanna look at the predictive analysis library. That's our expert library with over 100 classic and trending machine learning algorithms. Um, where we, in, in, on, uh, over the course of the last quarters, added also some AutoML uh, capability, which uh, yield even better productivity 
in that area of uh, yeah, selecting a machine learning algorithm for a given problem. We'll see that uh, later when we kind of maybe ha have time to look into that AutoML capability. Um, but it's specifically designed uh, to supply these expert algorithm and uh, uh, enable yeah, application developers to apply them in best performance as part of an SAP HANA application. There's many, many features as part of this predictive library. Um, just in contrast to what we've seen for the automated predictive library, the PAR library provides a rich set of algorithms in these different categories, classification regression, cluster analysis, time series analysis, et cetera, et cetera. And um, yeah, for example, if we look into uh, the area of classification, you would see 10, 15, 20 different algorithms. If you're not an expert, which one would you wanna choose to apply for the problem? So you need some kind of uh, more in-depth knowledge uh, if you wanna kind of apply um, uh, a PAL library algorithm to your problem. However, this may yield in better uh, machine learning model performance or quality or outcome and in, 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 in that's value uh, which you can achieve with applying the predictive algorithm. So often where we see with APL, you are fast forward, you're getting good results already, but if you have a high value, a uh, singular scenario where the outcome of your prediction is of key importance, you may wanna apply uh, uh, a dedicated PAL algorithm to the problem as you may yield an even better predictive uh, uh, outcome or performance. Time series analysis here is a, uh, a very strong area as it's also uh, a key area which is used by SAP's yeah, uh, application integrated business planning. So there are a lot of the algorithms are kind of part of the IBP demand planning and, and forecasting application uh, and also other S4 machine learning scenarios. So that's a very popular area for leveraging also the predictive analysis library. Now, if you want to call the, the PAL algorithms, uh, you would call them as uh, procedures from the SysAFL schema. As in this example, we're calling the PAL unified classification algorithm, just pass in our data in one table and in another table, maybe a temporary one, we pass in the parameters. So we have to prepare the parameters in a table and pass them to the function call, but that's basically it. Uh, off you go and you would be getting back the results of different kinds uh, of result types here out of this uh, procedure call. Certainly then, in if we wanna now embed this into an application as it's simple SQL or SQL script calls, you have all the means to do so. So ABAP managed database procedures are means, which also S4HANA and intelligence in our lifecycle management leverage and many other S4HANA based um, extensions, including partner application leveraging this approach to embed uh, PAL functions. And certainly if you de develop your application with business application studio, um, all the, the HANA design time artifacts uh, uh, can be used, dot procedures, table functions, typically to embed the um, HANA machine learning, the PAL or the APL function calls into the application. And the same certainly is true if both you're in cap based applications as well. Now for data scientists, as I said, we don't want to impose uh, the data scientists to make use of SQL. So therefore, data scientists can use the, the Python and R machine learning client, which I will demonstrate then also uh, next in the demo, but it gives you some preview. So what is this machine learning client about? We expose the data in HANA with a concept called the, the HANA data frame. Basically, the data frame is a virtual data reference uh, to yeah, any table, a query, a view, calculation, whatever in SAP HANA. It acts as a placeholder, which you can use then to manipulate uh, your reference, 
we will see that you add method and basically all you do, you would be adding and extending the SQL statement. Then in Python and R, we expose all the functions from the PAL and the automated predictive library uh, via distinct method. We'll see that also going forward and uh, which allow basically to instruct the execution of the algorithms based on the input data, which we have prepared as a HANA data frame, uh, and uh, then execute in the HANA database and consume and explore the results again in your Python and R environment. There's also other capabilities as part of these machine learning clients, like some spatial and graph capabilities, which you may have seen before. Um, uh, also in uh, context of the HANA data frame, you can import spatial or graph data, create graph workspaces through the Python machine learning API as well. Just as a preview, so what we would be doing, uh, we are connecting uh, against a HANA system, then creating a data frame. As you can see here, my DF1 would be the data frame. In the end, it's just a SQL statement. And we can then apply methods against this data frame like the describe method and in this example we would get all the universe uh, uh, information about all the columns uh, so we can yeah, explore in a tabular format here very easily with a single method call uh, all the data behind our data frame there's visualization um, options and methods there of different kinds to explore the data in the sense of using a small uh, script in, in Python, uh, but in the end, we're pushing down all the calculation to the in-memory SAP HANA database and do all the heavy lifting uh, within the database, but give the data scientist the native, let's say, Python experience for the respective analysis steps. And then finally, we would call the, the algorithms, um, from the PAL or the APL library. And we'll see that again live. The idea is here that uh, uh, the algorithm reference, the, the parameters and everything is very close to what is kind of, let's say standard or uh, standard experience in Python by popular package like scikit-learn and others. Uh, and therefore it's very easy to pivot from one of these open source packages for data scientists to the HANA related machine learning algorithm from PAL and APL, and therefore try out very easily uh, yeah, what results are to gain from applying a HANA embedded machine learning uh, function. So you can see here, we can score and evaluate the models graphically in tabular format and also then apply and execute the predictions applied model. So just as a first summary, uh, embedded machine learning algorithm, um, uh, we provide from those library, the, the APL and the, the PI function library for these classic scenarios, classification, regression, time series forecasting. The key advantage, certainly, you have a simple architecture. You have already your HANA in-memory database. You can now apply your machine learning algorithm co-located with your data. You should gain performance. Certainly a simple architecture and uh, yeah, can certainly apply the machine learning in combination with everything else you are uh, doing. And certainly we have uh, a preparation for uh, uh, or an advanced interfaces for the data scientists. And what we look into today specifically is how can we hand over that best possible machine learning model code from the data scientist to the uh, application developer. So now let's look at our first demo scenario. So the first thing uh, we typically then do in, in Python as we have uh, prepared our environment, we import uh, the, the packages. The HTTP CLI package is the native database client for Python. And uh, on top of that, there is the HANA ML package, which is the, which is the Python machine learning client, which builds upon HTTP CLI. But these are 
uh, yeah, basically the, the, the key packages. And then we can uh, yeah, use the algorithms, the PAL algorithms, which we would uh, make use of, or the, the data frame uh, concepts. So that's typically then what we do if we want to apply a specific class, we would need to import this, this class from, let's say, the installed packages list as we want to use those in this session. And that's kind of how I typically start. I see I have the most current version of uh, the HANA machine learning client here uh, already installed, released in September. 2.14. So the next, uh, and there's typically every quarter there's a new release and uh, they are accessible via the Python PyPy repository. You can simply pip install uh, the latest version. Also, if there's fixes, uh, the first place you would get the fixes is on the PyPy repo. So now connecting to uh, HANA Cloud and giving the URL um, user and in this case, I'm uh, being prompted for, for the password. So now I'm connected to the latest um, HANA Cloud release of QRC3. And now let's explore the capabilities. Yeah. Looks like my mouse is busy. So I need to switch here. And that shouldn't be a problem. So one thing uh, we want to get started is um, from the connection using uh, a SQL statement. Uh, and with that, we are creating a, a data frame called the F here. And this example here should only kind of state something special already that I can execute a multi statement um, um, SQL call against um, uh, the connection and thus consume some of the results of this, let's say, anonymous block if we want, or multi statement SQL block. So, this is the data set we're going to be using for our scenario. Um, we want to uh, use a classification scenario. And what we want to do is build a machine learning model which uh, predicts uh, if a person is likely to acquire diabetes. So, it's um, popular data science challenge data set diabetes and we have different let's say uh, features here describing the person's um, glucose blood pressure level thin thickness etc cetera, etc cetera, which kind of describe the plot the problem and the the class column is basically our target column which um, yeah indicates if somebody is likely to acquire diabetes so we now want to uh, create a new data frame using a different method. You can also use the table method here and specify from which schema, which table do we want to create the data frame. And just to explain the concept of the data frame in more depth, we see uh, that the data frame is simply a select statement. So no data has left the HANA database. We can apply other methods like here to head and cast to manipulate the SQL statement. And we see nothing has happened being really executed. We only changed the, the SQL statement um, as we applied the, the cast function here and uh, yeah, change the order. We want to have the ID column as the, the first column. We can use other methods like counts, and columns to kind of identify number of columns and the, the columns and their order as part of the, the data frame. Only now, if we use the collect method against the data frame, we're actually transferring data from uh, the HANA database to, to Python. And we can then also chain multiple methods. And if we chain head and use then collect, we basically filter on top six records here and only pass this top six records from the HANA database to the Python file. So that's kind of important if you have a large data set uh, and you use the method collect. Maybe you want to filter uh, or use head or any other methods to trim down the results that you want to transfer from the HANA database to your Python environment. 
Um, there's now this described scenario, which we've seen before on the slide. Basically, um, here, as I said, we see the, the univariate analysis, so all the descriptive statistics on the, the column values and their distribution, how many unique values, what's the mean, standard deviation, variance, uh, uh, quantiles, et cetera, et cetera. All that is kind of giving as, as output here from the described method. So that's a really nice one to understand the data. Um, Let's see how our target column uh, values are distributed. So we have 500 zeros and 270 uh, roughly uh, one values. Uh, so likely skewed distribution. So we could apply some methods for the machine learning model to better average that out, but maybe that's still fair for our machine learning problem. Just to show one of the visualization uh, techniques here. There's this correlation plot to just see how uh, the numeric columns are intercorrelated uh, to each other. And there's also a method called unified report. If you want to kind of calculate a complete yeah, data set report with all kinds of uh, uh, information about your data set, also that can be done um, as well giving us information about the cardinality of columns, etc. There's also this correlation and the data scatter matrix uh, uh, generated. So uh, some more information, but against large data set, you wanna maybe sample down. There's also sampling uh, parameters here. So you don't transfer too much data from the HANA side to the Python side. So as we want to train a classification model, so the first thing we want to do here is uh, split our uh, data into a trained subset and uh, a test and validation subset. So we use the train test validation split method here. And uh, see, we have 614 uh, rows uh, for training and 77 and 77 left for uh, uh, validation and testing of the scenario. So the validation subset we typically use to tune our uh, algorithm and uh, the parameters of the algorithm, the test subset we typically then uh, use as our end testing kind of once we are done. That's really kind of something we should not go back and forth uh, uh, all over the place because that's really then our Final, final testing as we want to probe and avoid that our model is, like, as we say, overfitted against the training data. It should also provide good predictions against data it has not seen during model training and model uh, validation. So the algorithm we are using is the unified classification. It's basically a procedure allowing us to specify any of the classification algorithm, making it easier uh, in the end for the application developer uh, to integrate yeah, any kind of classification algorithm into the application as the procedure interface is on also on the SQL side is, is stable. So it's basically a requirement coming from the SAP application, uh, from the SAP application as we uh, kind of provided more and more algorithms and maybe you people did switch from one algorithm to the other. We wanted to avoid that the, the interface needed to be to be changed here. Um, so it has already uh, fitted or trained the model. Um, just one first step into yeah, now seeing what's going on behind the scenes. We can use this connection object last executed statement uh, attribute here and print this and we, what we would be seeing is okay there's an anonymous uh, sql script block being generated and um, the respective file function had been called unified classification as we can see here so that's already a good starting point um, so somebody could basically copy paste this code and pass this um, 
to um, the uh, application developer. So that's a first means for this for this handshake we want to investigate. Then certainly there's also uh, for this model we have just created and apologize, I'm not going into the details on the, the algorithm and the specifications. As you can see here, there's learning rate estimator, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I think that's not in focus uh, specifically for this session. What are the parameters of this hybrid grading boosting pre model? That's basically uh, just uh, uh, as much uh, like this that the hybrid grading boosting tree algorithm is the most popular classifier and uh, regressor algorithm in the PAHA library these days. So very, let's say, comparable to HTGBoost, CutBoost implementation in the open source world. So we had seen here the uh, statistics generated. So we can see here the, the quality reach as one statistic would be the area under the curve, 0 0.8 based on the uh, training and, and implicit validation here. Um, there's also other output objects uh, from the training, uh, like the confusion metrics, which we can call here to inspect, okay, what are the predicted versus the, the, the true labels uh, to, with that, qualify how good is the, the model actually. And um, then there's also scoring uh, methods which would apply the model against this unseen data during the training, the test data set, which is my d-test data frame. And same here, we can now apply uh, uh, the trained model against this test data set and we actually uh, can see, and I'm only focusing in this moment on the AUC, but it actually provides a similar or even better value uh, for AUC on, on the test data set. So it generalizes a good this model which I've just created. And then there's the predict method. Um, we want to now uh, take the model and execute some predictions um, using the model, using the same test data set just for a reference here um, and yeah, can collect that and, and yeah, can certainly then again against this predicted, predicted result data frame, use some methods to kind of um, qualify what we want to see. We select here the columns, but basically uh, in the select method, we can also then manipulate our projection SQL statement as I'm using here some uh, HANA SQL function to uh, yeah, extract some data out of this recent code uh, JSON string to generate new columns, like here top one, percent one, because the recent code gives us explainability idea what are the uh, yeah, decision drivers for uh, the score, which is the actual predicted values for the individual IDs here. And the confidence with which this result or the decision, the specification decision is, is taken. And we see that for ID 258, glucose uh, is the, the top influencer for that decision, but only to the extent of 35%, where for the others, it may be 60 or 65%. Or there may be even a different uh, uh, value uh, from a different column. Um, driving this, this decision. For yeah, specialized data scientists, there's then even more, let's say, explainability graphics, giving even more indication, um, yeah, which columns or features as part of the model I have which influence against uh, yeah, the machine learning classification problem and as part of the model. We can also store the model. So there's some model, predictive model storage capabilities um, as part of the HANA machine learning plan, the model storage class. Um, 
we can in, in inspect here. Okay, we have 12 models already uh, trained here. And um, what's nice is, and that's what I, what I'd like to show here, is then we can, from the stored models, also create a so-called model report, which gives us even more insight uh, in a yeah, graphical format beside, let's say, the statistics, which we have uh, seen, um, like, for example, uh, the, the popular for classification problems, the rock hall, the cumulative gains, um, uh, et cetera, which is for classification and an important kind of curve to see uh, yeah. how, how many of, let's say, the population uh, if, it, if the population is my, my customer base, how many, uh, uh, what's the fraction of my customer base and maybe I need to contact to achieve, let's say, um, true positive rate of, let's say, 80%, 60%. All right. But now we want to basically bridge to... Um, between the data scientist and the, um, the, the application developer. And there's basically two approaches uh, which the Python machine learning client provides. The first approach is that each uh, artifact or, or, or object, algorithm object instance provides methods to generate SQL code. As you can see here on the, on the left-hand side, highlighted get file functions, highlighted fit procedure. So for each object, I can actually then generate uh, the, the fit procedure call, the predict procedure call. Um, so that's something we will see in a second. And moreover, there's also the option to generate HANA deployment infrastructure, HDI design time project file. So complete project and um, the complete uh, yeah, artifacts needed to apply the, the, the HANA PAL algorithms as part of a business application studio project, if you want. Uh, we will see that as well in a second live. Um, what's kind of the real advantage here that also um, all the yeah, required, let's say, HDI artifact needed in, in a business application studio or yeah, uh, web IDE projects needed for applying PAL or API procedures are included. We, as we need synonyms for the PAL procedures, which reside outside of the HDI schema, we generate the role grants needed for uh, kind of executing the procedures. And then uh, we also need to reference a user provided service uh, because we are accessing procedures outside of the local HDI schema. Therefore, we need a user provided service reference, which also needs to be added as part of the project. As the user provided service uses, user requires access to the SysAFL schema. So that's something we can specify here. And then what we would see. Uh, a complete, let's say, directory is, is generated here of objects, including an MTA YAML file with the user provided service reference. Uh, then there are some procedures. And typically, what we do for a predictive uh, scenario, we have the fit and the predict procedure. And here in the concept, how we generate the artifacts, we distinguish between a base procedure which incorporates, let's say, the base configuration of the algorithm, so with the parameters, the algorithm, and the problem. And then we have the consumption procedure, which is basically exchangeable as it applies the base procedure in context of your application and your data. So imagine you want to apply um, um, the predict call. You could apply this in a procedure in a table function, in a calculation view, uh, as part of an uh, OData uh, service uh, uh, function, et cetera. So there's different ways, and therefore there's, we distinguished uh, between this consumption layer and the base layer, 
to be more flexible with applying um, yeah, then the, the actual um, generated model. But the base procedure is basically uh, um, defining what the data scientist has defined, the algorithm, the scenario, and the configuration, the parameters of the respective algorithm. So let's go back now to um, the Python <clears throat> demo here. And as we have uh, created this object instance for this hybrid gradient boosting tree model, um, just to showcase some of the methods here, get fit parameters, get fit and output table names, uh, or the, the fit procedures as we ex execute this, we could get all the information from these function calls, including this generated procedure. So it goes beyond last executed statement, what we have seen before. So this is really, uh, yeah, nailing what uh, we have uh, kind of configured and uh, or the data scientist has configured last as he has or she has run uh, the fitting of the hybrid grading boosting model. So that's the, the first approach. Um, and this is a newer approach, what we enabled before. Now the, the second approach, enabling um, the SQL tracing for the HANA connection from Python. Uh, so we are enabling SQL trace and uh, SQL trace history. And now the objects uh, would be really locked um, as the tracing has started. Is we now look, is there anything traced yet? No, there isn't anything traced yet. Therefore, I need to uh, execute the fit and the predict method again to basically lock this. And this is what I'm going to do now. And we already see that there's more info generated as I execute. I already see the code uh, which got executed. The same here for the predict method. I see what has been generated. And um, yeah, I would also see, OK, there's one object unified classification um, here already executed. And then I could use more of, let's say, this, this um, lock tracing detail objects to understand, yeah. Um, the the code and for the prediction and uh, yeah the objects involved uh, for the predict calls for example etc. So so same here. But this is basically now used or the basis for the for the current implementation of this uh, artifact generation. So there's a, a class called artifacts and generators. There's one for HANA and one for, for ABAP even for a specific scenario, but we'll come to that in a second. So for now, I'm executing the, the HANA generation, calling the HANA generator, giving the project a name, a version. If I know the user provided service, which will be used, I'm not creating that, but if I know the user provided service, I can already specify this here. Yes, that will be part of the YAML file being generated. And yeah, everything will be generated here in a local directory for now. Which certainly, I could in the end also uh, post on a GitHub repo. I'm now generating the artifacts and can now see here um, by different means. Okay, the, the procedures have been generated. I can now also go onto the, the file explorer here and would see, okay, um, just now there, we have generated the HDI um, folder structure and there was the YAML file and under the source tree, I would, for example, uh, see the procedures being generated and certainly I can now open um, the procedures and have a look. 
and yeah, would in this case see how the consumption procedure uh, looks like. Or uh, if I go back here to the file explorer, um, in the synonyms, I would see that for the PAL unified classification, there's one synonym uh, created and for the PAL unified classification predict function from the sys AFL schema, uh, there's a synonym created. So that's needed. And uh, what's also needed is the, the grants, um, which, yeah, provides access to uh, the AFL PAL execute uh, privilege from the database to the user of the HDI application. So that's everything is, is, is generated here. Um, and I could basically import this now into um, my, my uh, business application studio project. And just as a yeah, nice teaser, but only relevant for uh, classification scenarios, really, there's also this um, ABAP um, uh, generation method um, here. It's, it's, it's based on the uh, hybrid creating boosting tree object instance. So we're not using the, the trace method, but we're using uh, quite uh, an, a method which is specific for unified classification and our unified classification object, which we call here hybrid gradient boosting HGBC. Uh, and same here, um, I would kind of create an ABAP class, which I could then import into my ABAP environment if you want. So a shortcut, again, for the handshake between the ABAP developer and the data scientist. Coming back to the, the slides for a second, um, if you have more detailed interest in how such an a project looks like we have a complete sample project in our uh, sample repository and in this block here data and analytics showcase developing uh, ml application on this PTP showcases this generation of the hdi code uh, and giving all the examples and you can basically uh, copy and import the git uh, project from our samples repo into your business application studio project and, and yeah inspect how this looks like what is is, is generated um, um, by the, the Python environment. It's based on a different scenario, prediction of food prices, uh, car food prices uh, in Germany, a popular uh, data set called Tanker König. Um, so where we have all the uh, gasoline price data available across uh, completed Germany on a daily basis. Okay, so we've seen this, and maybe now, um, before I yeah would be going more and more to to other topics, uh, Vitaly, maybe we can we can pause here and see what questions there are, and 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 answer uh, any of the questions by the audience. Okay, Christoph. Actually, uh, there were quite a few uh, questions, so I hope that you addressed already some of them. For example, there were two questions about um, uh, about uh, is it possible to use ML scenario with CAP cloud application programming model? Uh, similar question. Uh, can you give a hint, SAP developer tutorial, how to integrate the results from application developer perspective? I believe this was the the, the blog post that you were uh, yeah, uh, exactly. mentioning at the end. That's this, this blog post and then uh, basically cup scenarios, you have, can, can create table functions and in a table function you can embed the um, the predict function, for example, if you want to embed procedures. So that's that's part of the blog post here. 
As you can see here, in this case, we used a uh, uh, data function here uh, against uh, PAL functions we, we had uh, created as part of the project and which are then called as part of the you know, JS service here created. So that's kind of gives you the, that, that full idea of how uh, the Pi function part would be embedded and called from a cup project. Yeah. There was a question as well from Markus Rest, uh, right when you were explaining, you know, um, integration with ABAP. Uh, if the import of the ABAP class possible by using GCTS. So GCTS is Git based transport. Um, well, we haven't haven't explored this. We kind of um, following a, a, a different path, um, which is yet not uh, fully implemented as ISLM is a component of s for managing machine learning tonight and one of primarily kind of uh, uh, provides the ABAP classes in, in conform of ISLM as this application component managing machine learning scenarios in s -Hana. So that's kind of what we're currently focusing on and, and targeting. But today, basically, you have the ABAP class and you could uh, include it in your ABAP development environment. Uh, now, let's say maybe copy paste form, uh, form and transport it from there. Sure. Uh, there was as well a question from Satish, uh, how is XI, so explainable AI implemented? Uh, do we have libraries such as Shapely integrated? I believe that you showed it as well. Yes, exactly. So explainability, that, that was the recent code we saw during the prediction for the local, the predict explainability. Um, uh, that Shapely, Sabas, and, and different, let's say, libraries used depending on the algorithm again. Uh, but that's a key area of uh, kind of the PAL and the APL library to provide explainability uh, along with the models we created. Okay. There was a question as well from Anurag. Uh, could we use Pico to load and export models? Um, Certainly, there's let's say different uh, uh, ways to do that. So the 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 Hana uh, machine learning model is basically uh, behind a data frame can be collected and uh, um, passed into a pandas data frame, and then every anything can be done uh, uh, from from that uh, point in time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there was a question as well from Satish, uh, if, uh, if they can pip install these libraries, but you showed this already uh, as well. Uh, the other question from Honor, I pointed him to one of the blog posts that are explaining differences between HANA data frame and Pandas data frame, but basically he was asking, can we assume that we can apply the expertise in Pandas to SAP data frame? That's the that's the idea that we uh, provide same or comparable methods uh, uh, available for the pandas data frame against the HANA data frame. Okay. There, there will be a gap certainly based on the nature of the pandas and the, the HANA, let's say data frame, but that's kind of the idea that similar experience is 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 given there. And one more question from Anurag: uh, How to implement or develop custom ML scenarios in on premises? Or is this possible only with BTP Cloud? No, um, that's that's a very good question and very important question. So the Python machine learning client connects against a HANA Cloud environment as well as uh, uh, any on on premise in, install. And uh, but what you basically need them to know if you if you use the Python machine learning client, which algorithms would be present in your um, um, yeah, on-premise environment. As there's a gap, new algorithms come first in the HANA cloud environment. So everything green here, you would today not find in a, a, a on-premise instance. And therefore that's kind of the distinction. Yeah. But certainly, and that's how we started with the Python R machine learning clients. And, where kind of also a key user base is, it's also the on-premise customer. 
And then there is one more question from him. Can we use ML scenarios in Fiori applications which make use of RAP? Yes, certainly. Um, that's that should also be be possible. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm not a, a, a Fiori expert mm -hmm. uh, programmer, but certainly on top of let's say the the old data service functions created uh, uh, result and those methods uh, should be consumable um, and, and pass the result in the Fiori UI. And the last question that I uh, still see in the chat mm -hmm. is from um, uh, Tangamuthu. Uh, how do you support ML ops? That's also a very good question that depends a little bit on the the application. So with the, the Python machine learning client and the PAL library, we basically provide um, yeah, all the, 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 the algorithm functions and, and capabilities. Uh, but today we don't give, let's say, a standard, let's say, HANA environment-based uh, ML, let's say, operation application or, or, or context. So that's something which is uh, part of the application in S4HANA. This is intelligent scenario lifecycle management um, for um, yeah, BTP applications. There's this, this AI launchpad. And uh, what we see in many, let's say, other applications that um, yeah, also the ML ops capabilities are very specific to the application and therefore applications somehow build their, let's say, lightweight, lightweight ML ops uh, uh, themselves as, as part of the application. But in for, for S4HANA and Intelligent Scenario Lifecycle Management, uh, there's all the capabilities for ML ops uh, uh, already there. And um, yeah, for yeah, a HANA native application, or uh, BTP, HANA cloud-based application, that's something you, know, you would basically uh, uh, build out you, yourself. We have also a sample scenarios there, which we have presented at, at TechEd before a couple of years back, um, which kind of would help you with versioning your models or um, you know, auditing kind of predictions and, and uh, inspecting model drift and things like that. So there's scenario code already available, which would help you to kind of uh, maybe build this out yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are almost at the top of the hour. Uh, yeah. Christoph, are there any closing slides from your side? And uh, as well, are you coming to TechEd or are there any sessions during TechEd that would be helpful for today's participants? Yes. Um, we have a multi-model session at, at TechEd by Markus Fahd and, and myself. It's a DA180, if I recall it right. So please join us there to learn about the, the latest of uh, the multi-model graph spatial doc store capabilities in conjunction with uh, the machine learning aspects. It will be a virtual session, so we want, will not be on site, but uh, happy to, to share uh, that update uh, in this virtual hands-on session. Um, yeah, with that, basically, I, I, I'd like to kind of uh, close and um, yeah, if you're interested in the in the algorithm, there's also on the roadmap e explorer. There's kind of always information about what are the the latest enhancements from the PAL library, for example. And there's uh, beside the blogs I have already uh, pointed you to. There's a series of uh, nice blogs also overviewing uh, HANA embedded machine learning. And um, yeah, please have a look uh, at those. And yeah, please um, yeah also join us in the community with more answers and uh, yeah join us at TechEd. Uh, as I said, DA uh, one hundred eighty is the session about uh, Subhana Cloud graphs 
spatial um, block store and machine learning capabilities by Marcus Bart and myself. And with that, I want to thank you very much for joining uh, us today. I hope this was uh, helpful and interesting. And I will look for your comments and, and more questions and uh, hope I can answer them. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Christoph. Uh, there was the last question as well if these slides would be available. So if you don't mind to send them to me, then I will be able to share as well with uh, with these participants. Okay, super. We do so. Thank you very much. Uh, so thank you, Christoph, for uh, presenting. Thank you, everyone who participated. If we didn't manage to answer your uh, questions during this live session, please post them as well. Uh, in the comments section of the event page. Uh, I will paste it once again, uh, just in case in the uh, in the chat, uh, where you can, as I mentioned, you know, post uh, any question that remained and that were not answered. Thank you everyone for participation and uh, should you be interested in joining uh, another session on the embedded machine learning uh, that time in data warehousing cloud then uh, there will be another session uh, today with Andreas Forster at 5 p.m. Central European time so in seven hours. Take care and have a good day. Bye bye.